everybody! And welcome back to the character segment. Yes. Where we talk about best boys, best girls, lizard boys, booby girls, every type of boy and girl. God, those jiggle physics on cowgirl. Oh my Ooh. god, not even on cowgirl. Okay. <laughs> and, the, and the witch girl. So I yeah. specifically have a note about the witch. I wrote, this big boob witch lady is lucky that anime clothes and boob physics apply to this show. Yeah. <laughs> and I specifically mean the conjunction of anime clothing over boob jiggle physics <laughs> because she is centimeter away from a nip slip for this whole show and it never happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but with that being said, I think um, I'd like to really quickly, I pulled up the pages, I'd like to go over the characters that have confirmed um, bases, like characters that were based on someone, mm -hmm. real quick before we get into more detail. So. Goblin Slayer's um, placeholder design was originally based on the Restless Armor from Dragon Quest. And his character, like the way he acts, is supposed to be like Batman or the Punisher. I can see that. Yeah. yeah. Also, his English voice actor is the dude who did the motion capture for the Doom Slayer in Doom. Yes. <laughs> I, yes. That just sounded like a funny piece of trivia. But I will say that it makes him a better character in my mind once you tell me that he's supposed to be a Batman Punisher-esque kind of person because that's an actual character archetype not just me seeing someone who's maybe not morally the greatest yeah so the next character that i know who had a specific basis so the high elf uh his placeholder's design is uh shino asada from the sword art online franchise oh i don't know who that uh, is but i'm sure one of you does i think i know is it i think i know who that is yeah also, apparently, uh, she doesn't wear underwear because she doesn't understand the point of it. Elves, am I right? Wait. Hey. All right. So, the dwarf is, the dwarf has fashion based on Oriental and Buddhist uh, fashion, and the placeholder design is Isaac Natero from Hunter Hunter, oh. which I do get that reference. So I like Hunter Hunter, and I get that, and I think that's pretty cool. And then the lizard man is heavily based on Native American mythology and kind of clothing and dress mm -hmm. and that kind of thing um spearman is 100 percent lancer coup from fate <laughs> where does this fit into the fate timeline <laughs> right no like this this is just like if you just take an image of his face when he's walking holding his spear i will insert the image here because i saved it on my computer but it is straight just gill with a different color hair like the earrings are even the same like, some of the characters, they changed design slightly. They did not change this man's design. Yeah, you said no. Gil. Sorry, not Gil. Koo. Lancer Koo. I've been... I called him Gil in my notes. It's fair, yeah, though. Gil of... has a similar hairstyle in one of his variations. Yeah, and it was before I noticed his rat tail, the, the hair coming down. And he had the arrogant attitude that uh, Gilgamesh often does before he, before he came out as more uh, of a good character. Mm -hmm. All right, and then there's... The witch, and her placeholder design is the sorceress from Dragon's Crown. Yeah. I've never heard of it. I haven't either, but I figured someone would. Um, the female knight that uh, goes with Heavy Warrior, mm -hmm. she's uh -huh. based on Agrius Oaks from Final Fantasy. I actually don't know who that character is. Uh, I don't either, but yeah. I think it's interesting. I also said in my notes, her armor looks incredibly similar to uh, Urza Scarlet from Fairy Tail. Like in the anime? A little bit. It, maybe a bit more plated. But no, the, the whole chest plate is exactly like Urza's. Yeah. If you look, it's the same shape and design and all that kind of stuff. Does Urza have a shield or no? Urza carries a shield sometimes. Okay. But I wasn't yeah. talking about the shield. I meant like her actual plate. Yeah. 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 From like the waist up, she looks very Urza-esque. And then Heavy Warrior is based on Guts from Berserk. I knew explicitly. it. Explicitly. Yeah, I knew So that. those are the characters that have listed based ons. And I think some of the more minor characters had a couple like listed that they were based on, but I didn't bother looking those up. But I thought that was interesting because the uh, original designs of a lot of these characters, as we said a couple episodes ago, were based on a text board where they just put in placeholder images. And I think it's actually kind of cool that a lot of the inspirations stayed really true to their inspirations. All right. Uh, so there's a lot of characters in this show. Yes. So I think maybe, do we want to go through based on, uh, the Wikia organizes the adventurers by level. Let's go by just the main parties. They're the only ones that okay. really get an extensive amount of screen time. Okay. Yeah. So, well, let's start then with uh, Goblin Slayer. Who... 
kind of has a character arc through this series. Like, he realizes mm-hmm. that he can't go it alone, and that it's, like, nice to do it with, like, help. Yeah. But he, he definitely has, like like you said, he has that very Batman-y kind of vibe to he's it. He's very fixated. Yes. Like, he's uh, he will kill the goblins at all costs, because the goblins are what matters to him. Which I get it, his backstory kind of explains a lot of that away. It's still incredibly fixating, and I think if I hadn't read that it was based on, like, a kind of Batman or Punisher archetype, it would bother me more. I yeah. think, at least when I watched it, I understood well enough that the anime was definitely making the point that Goblin Slayer, even if he was doing a good thing, just was not right in the head. Yeah. Oh yeah, they oh, say yeah. it several times that he's just outright cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Yeah. Like, other characters call him cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Yeah. Like, like, I mean, that's a for Collins, right? I think he was, but yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, like he, like he, like they actively like know that he's insane, but I mean, hey, it's very focused insanity, so yeah, it's insanity that doesn't hurt other humans for now. For now, <laughs> more than they already have been hurt. I'm gonna clarify that. Yeah. Um. So that that makes sense. He has a decent arc, but you know, he's a pretty simplistic character. All said, you know. He has, yeah. a, he has a tragic backstory, a la Batman. Yes. Um, yeah. And he goes Punisher to take revenge. Yeah. Uh, with that being said, we don't know much about the High Elf Archer. Yeah, not very uh, much. Um, we don't but, know uh, much. Uh, well, High Elf Archer has this, like, the entire series, she has this thing where she's, uh, her main motivation for staying around is, this guy's fucked up, I need him to not be fucked up. Yeah, yeah. 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 But she's funny. I mean, I'd say outside of Priestess and Goblin Slayer, the rest don't really have their own developmental arc. No. We're just no. seeing more of them. So yeah. she doesn't have her own arc, but she is a solid character. She's in most of the episodes. Yeah. The the rest of the party, the three that join them, the, I think their arc is pretty much contained to their introductory episode where yeah. it's, they're not, it's the arc of everyone else, but done in a shorter time to explain why they're with him. Mm-hmm. Where they they just don't know the goblins are this bad, and then they get traumatized upon actually seeing the extent of yeah. the damage they do. Yep. So then there's the dwarf shaman and the lizard priest, yep. and I want to bring up that the high elf and the dwarf are definitely based on Lord of the Rings and the feud between dwarves and elves, and they even have the drinking contest that Legolas and Gimli have in the second Lord of the Rings movie. Mm-hmm. It's entirely true. Also, Gimli in the Lord of the Rings does make jokes about pointy-eared elves, so that's a direct ripoff. And then the lizard priest... Iguanodon, Brontosaur, Velociraptor. <laughs> he just yells out dinosaur yeah. names. Yeah. I don't know. I appreciated that. Also, I like that he's going to evolve into a dragon. I thought that was a kind of awesome storyline. Yes, like, it, like, it, it, like, basically, just like high elf and this and this dra- and this lizard man dragon, just kind of best friends for all eternity, <laughs> kind yeah. of type deal. And he's so obsessed with cheese. I love it. Yeah. He's so obsessed with cheese. Like these are like these characters. Like they they, they have their they have their own like motivations and everything. But they're de- they definitely fit into that comedic relief archetype almost in a sense. So like they're there. So like they're there to add a bit of lightheartedness to this other uh, to this otherwise very serious party in Priestess and Goblin Slayer. I feel yeah. Like high elf and dwarf are constantly arguing, and lizard kind of puts himself between them and is like, dudes. Quit it. Cut I it out. I had a storytelling problem, though, because when they're introduced, it feels like in a and d campaign when a near TPK happens and oh, a yeah. bunch of new characters have to be introduced. Yeah, the DM's just like, and look, up beside you walks this level 18 paladin. He asks you, are you going to do this? I will accompany <laughs> you. Yeah. It, it had very much that vibe. You know, like, they didn't choose to be a party yeah. with Goblin Slayer. They just were a The campaign wasn't Slayer. written around the idea they'd all be partying with Goblin Slayer. It just happened because bun- pretty much the entire party died when they were stupid. Yeah. yeah. And then there's Priestess. Yeah. So, I mean, Priestess is basically the foil to Goblin Slayer. Yeah. Across this whole story. She's small and cute and kind of weak, and she's not quite as vitriolic about goblins as he is. Um, and she's there to kind of humanize him. That's mm-hmm. that's her role throughout the whole series. Mm-hmm. Priestess humanizes Goblin Slayer by interacting with him. And then there's this, like, in the last episode, there's this Kakashi-level joke about him not showing his face under the mask. And then he shows his face, and everyone's like, <gasps> Yeah. Oh no! Who was the bat? It's, it's, it's literally, it's literally 
like that that there's an entire like couple chapters in Naruto devoted to when we finally get Kakashi's face reveal. It's exactly that. And he's even got facial scars and silver hair. It's great. I love it. Um, let me see if I had anything in my notes about how I felt. Um, <laughs> I have a lot of just random comments about, like, cheese. Mmm, <laughs> cheese. <laughs> <laughs> also, Delicious. I would like to make the comment, uh, I didn't make this earlier and I should have, but, um... In episode 9, when he, like, brings down the cave and they're fighting all these goblins that are approaching from the hallway full of columns, it's just Moria. Yeah. Like, that's actually just the Moria scene in the first Lord of the Rings movie. That's it. It's okay. just Moria. We know this guy's a giant Tolkien fan, No, though. but, but like, there's, there's, a, there's a thing with saying fire wine and having it mean fire whiskey. Or having an elf and a dwarf feud over, like, their different races' differences. And then... Having a bunch of small running goblins approach you from the dark, uh, from a giant columned hall underground, while the elf goes, footsteps, footsteps in the dark, like drums, drums in the deep. And then the big orc appears, and they have a cave troll! <laughs> Look, yeah. they have a cave troll! Yeah. I mean, yes, but it ends up going even a step no, beyond no, no. where they just straight up have the line, what is in my pocket, in the middle of a riddle no, game. Yeah. No, and no. an episode is called There and Back Again. Yeah! No, no you don't understand. It's, it's not a cave troll. It's a goblin champion. <laughs> Get it right. It's a cave troll. They have a cave troll. <laughs> it's just a cave troll. <laughs> it's the champion of all goblins. Welcome also, back to the Anime Club podcast. I'm Nick Knack. This week we this week we watched The Lord of the Rings. <laughs> also, I literally just wrote in my episode comments, uh, "Sword made is sus." How so? Because hmm. uh, she's sus. Uh, she... My dude, did you miss the point? The part where like she knew about like the the corpses hanging from the chamber, like gutted, and the fact that they were being used for dark magic rituals. Uh, I could she, be wrong. she knew I about did. that. She says she knew about it. I could it. be wrong. Well, no, because she... no, the reason she knew about it is because she knew that there was like a coup, or there was an attempted coup to try yeah. and overthrow her power. She's sus. She could have said something about it, and she didn't. She's sus. The reason I'm not she, wrong, the reason, no, there's political. There, there's political reasons she didn't say. Okay, anything but about we it. don't get those political reasons. Therefore, she's sus. She she mentions it briefly offhand, and you can kind of infer that because of the political <sighs> landscape. That the reason she didn't bring those up in the first place was because it would have caused more issues than actually than actually reporting the deaths were. So I might be wrong, but was the implication of that arc that she actively went and murdered people so that she could make it look like goblins? So that goblins the implication is that that alligator the alligator was her pet. Yes, well that That's was hers. Yeah. yeah, she actively went and got the goblins down there. I thought that she knew the goblins were down there. Yeah, she there. knew they were down there. She actively knew. She was, we think it's goblins below the city. No, she knows it's fucking goblins, and she knows that no one will come to help her if she says it's goblins, except for Goblin Slayer. Yeah. Which is why I thought that it wasn't the implication there that she then, the people they found above ground to point at goblins, that wouldn't have been possible with goblins, so she killed them. Yeah. In, we don't Something really know much similar, about yeah. how. It's not did. explained in the anime, and we haven't read the books. I haven't. I, I, I just got. Well, no, I, but I'm just clarifying, just in case Vorn has. Don't say nope. anything, because I don't want to know until I've read it. If I plan to read it, but okay, made is sus. That's it. All right, I, I wrote I got it in no my notes. Okay. Here. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was really funny. But moving on, I would like to touch on a couple characters who aren't part of the main party. Yeah. I do want to talk specifically about Spearman, Witch, Female Knight, and Heavy Warrior. Because they do show up repeatedly as background characters throughout the show. Don't forget Guild Girl. Oh, yeah, and yeah. Guild Girl. She's probably the one out of all of them that has the most actual... Like, like out of the side characters, she probably has girl. the most extra screen time, yeah. I'd say. I don't know, Spearman and Witch, because they actually come to meet them in Watertown. Yeah, they And we see they're... Spearman and Witch in starting in episode two, and I think we see them at least in the background of every time they're in the guild talking. Like, yeah. Witch even talks to Priestess about that scroll that she did for him, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so we do get a fair amount of interaction with those four characters. Uh, I don't think we need to talk about them in detail. I just want to mention that those four, we get a lot of screen time within the anime. And looking them up, I did notice that they do have much larger roles in the uh, the manga. 
Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. they are much bigger characters because they're they're bigger in a lot of the other quests and stuff that happens. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, um... Like waifu wars. Wars. We, we yeah. forgot, waifu like, wars. Waifu wars. Waifu wars. How did we forget waifu wars? I was about to bring that up. Oh, see, we thought you were going to end the episode. All three of us did. No. No. Oh. Waifu wars. Waifu man. wars. Come waifu on. wars, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> waifu wars. Do we need waifu to do the chat? We just said wars. waifu wars. Like waifu wars. Well, I guess Seki went ahead with the chant. Yeah, she did. You weren't well, stopping me. do it then. All right, Seki, who is your waifu? Um... I have two this time. You can't have. Is two. one of them Spear Boy? One of them is Spear Boy. It's because it's cool, isn't it? Yes. So that right. kind of doesn't. No way, no. That, that kind of doesn't count because he is just Lancer Koo. Like straight up, he is just Lancer Koo. Outside of Lancer Koo being best boy ever, right? In any show that he's in, Lizard Cheese Boy, my mm. cheese brethren. Yeah. Okay, that's my wife. All right. Knick knack. I don't know. I actually really liked uh, High Elf. All right. All right. All right. Realm? Um, this one's a bit of a toss-up for me. It's a bit of an e- unusual combination here. But my waifu is either Gil Girl or uh, Dwarf. Or Dwarf. Dwarf's pretty great. Yeah, Dwarf is pretty great, but... I, I don't Gil know. Girl is cute. I I was kind of shipping her. Yeah. And like Goblin Slayer, but that was never gonna happen. No, it's it's not there. it's not gonna happen. But you know what? It's I, cute. I I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go with her because you know what? I'm rooting for her. It's a it's a ship I support. Personally. Also, she came up with that whole guild will offer one gold coin for every it, goblin you kill. Exactly. Best girl. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, she has no chance next to Priestess and Cowgirl. Absolutely. Mm. And even th- and even then, but yeah. still, anyways. Born. Oh, sorry. I was just remembering the scene that, uh, let's see, what what did the guy, what did the uh, heavy warrior kill that huge ass goblin? What was yeah. that? Yeah, it's like, you only got one gold coin from it. It's like, yeah. damn it! Actually, that was female knight complaining. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was a goblin. But who's your waifu? Oh, which? Okay, that, that was the question we asked the, you, not what you were thinking of. The... You know, actually, okay, so there's an, uh, there's another, uh, wait, what was, oh, okay, so you know what uh, a couple of the characters specifically remind me of, like, at least in some of their designs, High Elf is very much like the Archer Elf from a dragon, from a uh, video game called Dragon's Crown, especially in the design. He also hmm. low-key looks like an Ishizoka reviewer's character. But oh, yeah, you know. absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of these characters actually look a lot yeah. like the reviewer characters. <laughs> yeah, Please, no. um, the uh, the the sorceress very much look also looks like the sorceress from Dragon's Crown. I'll show you guys pictures. But later she is. Them. That's the I literally said. Oh, that. I missed her. Okay, I missed that one. I, I covered all the characters that were that were named as sorceress, and the witch is based on sorceress from Dragon's Crown. Okay, I did say that. Okay, I, mi- I missed Dragon's Crown. I missed yeah. Dragon's Crown. There okay. are actually two characters based on Dragon's Crown. Yeah. On that note, try harder, everyone. Yeah, see ya. Try harder. Try harder than Realm.